Hey YouTube, got this uh, solar panel project that I got going on here. Uh, finished building it a while ago, just never made a video of it until now. But the whole reason I made it is because I have a hanger here without electricity. And uh, I know there's a lot of other people out there that have hangers in the same situation that I do. You got no power out here, so I um, figured I'd share this video with you guys. But anyway, I got a... Uh, a Home Depot solar panel on top of a cart that I built out of just two by fours and back here I got all the equipment but this is a 12 or 24 volt capable solar unit I guess you could call it um, it's 12 volts so I can power my inverter uh, or this cigarette lighter down here or cigarette lighter outlet down here 12 volts so you can jump start your car or if I want, I could switch it to 24 volt with this uh, big ass uh, series parallel switch. And uh, I can also just turn it off by bringing it out of the uh, contacts. It's just a really big oversized knife switch, that's all it is. It's just got a protective orange cover on it so nothing drops in it. But this could be used to jumpstart cars or if you have a 24 volt airplane, you can use it to jumpstart one of those. Um, this is a this is actually like a $60 switch I got off of eBay and I'm not too worried about how much current it can handle because if you look inside here you can kind of barely see but that bus bar and those contacts it's kind of hard to tell on the camera but it's really heavy duty I mean it looks to me like it's at least 8th inch um, it's rated for 225 amps of constant current so I have no doubt that it could handle probably 100 or maybe even 1500 crank amps for just a brief period. Uh, I've jump started my car, I've jump started my truck with it, and I've, I've held my finger to all as many points as I could just, just to see if anything got hot, and it was all cold, so I'm not too worried about uh, the limits of what this thing can handle. It's, it's pretty heavy duty the way it is. But uh, to start from the source of power, you got 12 volts coming in here. Uh, this is underneath the solar panel. So you got 12 volts coming in here. You can see it in between the batteries. And you just follow that wire down here and it comes to this master switch. Um, you got an ammeter here. Uh, this is like a 1950s vintage ammeter. I don't even know what it's worth. It just, my grandfather gave it to me and I finally had a use for it. So I put it in here, but it seems to work really well. Um, it comes out of the ammeter after that, it goes to the solar charge controller here. Uh, that does a pretty good job at keeping the batteries topped off. Uh, as soon as I apply a load to it, it'll go into charge mode and it'll top them right back off. And uh, that, all of that circuitry actually goes through this series parallel switch. And the way it's wired is anytime the series parallel switch is in 12 volts, the inverter and 12 volt charge input, uh, it's all directly connected to the batteries. and. Uh, this, as soon as I take it out of 12 volts, the inverter and the charger gets disconnected. So when I convert it, or when I switch it to 24 volts, there's no chance of over voltaging or uh, sending too much power to anything. It, it's all uh, disconnected for safety. Now you could, you could have a series parallel switch with just, just a two pole uh, switch. This is a two, uh, this is a three pole double throw switch, uh, knife switch. And uh, you can you can swap between series and parallel with just two poles, but the third pole I wanted so I can have that extra precaution of being able to cut out the uh, 12 volt circuitry just to prevent it from getting over voltage. But um, these are two Costco batteries here, and I bought those with my uh, credit card rebate, so those are paid for just by gasoline. <laughs> and uh, you got your negative post here for jump starting you can just hook your jumper cable up to it and you got your positive post over here and all that comes through uh, one gauge copper uh, wire copper stranded wire uh, you got your battery terminal posts here now the way the way uh, this is hooked up is the one positive post is uh, connected with two wires and one negative post gets connected with two wires. And uh, on one wire, it goes into this switch. 
that's for the positive and the negative. So one wire goes to the switch and the one the other wire goes to the output um, terminal out here. And I'll show you a wire diagram too because it's 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 a little complicated to explain it over over video. But anyway, you can pull it out, put it in the sun. I got Home Depot caster wheels on here. I think they're like eight dollars a piece. They do good enough. Um, it's kind of hard to get it over that bump. If you can see over there, the uh, the tracks for the hangar doors are kind of bumpy. Kind of wish I had bigger wheels to be honest. I know Harbor Freight sells bigger ones, so if I ever decide to upgrade it, I'd probably go with the Harbor Freights. But anyway, bring it out here, point it towards the sun, and then make sure it's in 12 volts. And you can just turn on the master switch and you can watch the ammeter come up as it starts to charge it. It comes up pretty slow. I guess that's the way the charge controller operates. Um, if it's around noon or one o'clock in the afternoon, it'll go up to six amps. And if it's towards the end of the day, like it is now, it, I think it'll hang around two and a half or three. But uh, it's telling me the batteries are charged already. So there's no charging done. And so when it's not charging, it hangs around a pretty low current. Um, I think, personally, I think it's a trickle style charger where it just pulls a little bit of current, just enough to keep the batteries topped off. But um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty sensitive ammeter. If I put my hand over the top of the solar panel and cover it with my shadow, you can kind of see the uh, the ammeter move a little bit. It's it's uh, more noticeable on a, a bright sunny day during the, the afternoon or the early afternoon uh, here I have the Dewalt uh, 110 volt inverter it's got a couple of USB ports or a few USB ports on it uh, seems to work pretty well it's only a thousand watts so you can't run uh, like a space heater with it but it's good enough to run uh, you know a, a mid power vacuum and you just hook up your extension cord to it and run it to whatever you have to uh, and then of course I got my cigarette cigarette lighter right down here but it, it does what it needs to do it's good enough for me it can power my hanger these two batteries have enough capacity to power lights if you run an LED lights they'll run them for days and you really don't have to worry about charging the battery or the, the batteries and um, if, if it is if it is dead it takes about a full day to charge out in the Sun it's only a 90 watt solar panel so it it, it, it takes a fair share of time and, and these batteries do have a lot of capacity so it, uh, it takes a while and here's the wire diagram right here uh, forgive me I did the whole thing with a with a cheap sharpie marker but uh, the only thing missing from the diagram is the inverter and the cigarette lighter they're down here in the bottom as accessory output I didn't I didn't bother drawing them in uh, one reason because I ran out of room but the other reason I just didn't really think it was necessary since they're only accessories but uh, as far as the actual wiring of the cart, the, everything's here in the diagram. You can just pause it and look at it if you feel like building something similar to it. Uh, here in the middle, we have the three pole double throw series parallel switch. And all it is, it's just a big old three pole double throw um, knife switch. Uh, or some people like to call them Frankenstein, Frankenstein switches. Uh, it just has that old school look. The only reason you really can't see it is because it's got that big orange shroud over it. But underneath there is a an old style Frankenstein or a knife switch. Yeah, and as far as the overall construction goes, it's nothing more than just a bunch of two by fours I slapped together with uh, wood screws. I used a couple pieces of uh, steel just to hold it together and some critical points. I mean, these batteries do weigh almost 50 pounds a piece, so I wanted. I wanted the frame to be able to hold it, especially if I roll this thing over a bumpy, uh, a bumpy area, or these uh, these door tracks here. They're, they're pretty bumpy, so I wanted the thing to hold up after a while. But uh, I got these these tie down straps here, just holding them secure. I kind of built the frame around the batteries too, so they don't slide around. Uh, you can see I just kind of put down some some pieces of two by four just to keep them secure, um, and then. The rest of the frame is really just uh, just a, a big triangle with wheels on the bottom. But yeah, that's all it is. The solar panel's held on with four four wood screws. Nothing special. It's a really lightweight solar panel, so um, I'm not too worried about it. 
uh, breaking loose or anything. And just to visualize how the series parallel switch can uh, swap between voltages, uh, I have the solar panel master switch off and I can have the inverter turned on. So the inverter is just running on nothing more than the batteries right now and it's in 12 volts. Uh, as you can see here on the meter, 12 volt switch, or it's a 12 volt uh, output. And as soon as I take it out of 12 volts, the inverter is going to shut off. And now it's in 12 volts, or I'm sorry, 24 volts. So the inverter shut off as soon as I took it out of 12 volts. And that's just a safety measure I put in just in case I, uh, just so I don't accidentally send 24 volts to the wrong places. And now the meter reads 24, actually it reads 25.5. Well, that's good because that means the batteries are charged and that's coming off the uh, output post right here and here i am just running it uh, again it's towards the end of the day so right now it's only pulling about eh, about two and a half amps and uh, again if i move my hand over the panel it, you'll notice it's a really sensitive panel you can see the uh the meter move uh and i'm i'm barely covering the panel with my hand so it's just kind of visualizes how sensitive it is um, here I am just running my extension cord out to the hanger. Um, and and like I said at the beginning, it's really just so I could power my hanger, run lights, jump start a car or a truck, jump start a 24 volt airplane if I need to. That's actually not a 24 volt airplane. That's that's uh, that's not even a 12 volt airplane. That's actually an antique plane without a starter. So uh, I don't even know why I'm showing you that plane, but there, there are other planes out here that do have electrical systems. Uh, like the ones out there in the distance some of those are 24 volt so if if it ever comes i need to jump start an airplane i i have a reason and um it also run lights so i can work at night or just listen to joe rogan while i'm while i'm working on my airplane and last but not least uh two improvements that i'd like to do to this thing uh sometime down the road is i would like to put this panel on a hinge that way i can actually pull the panel up if in case I need to service the batteries these are uh, these are serviceable batteries you can top off the water with them so right now if I decide to do it I don't have much room it's it's kind of tight in there so it'd be easier if I could have this panel just pop up on a hinge instead of having to unscrew it every single time I wanted to pop it up um, the second improvement I'd like to make is there really are, there's there's no fuse on this thing. This this whole entire circuit doesn't have a fuse except for this one spot here, and that's for the the cigarette lighter. Other than that, there's there's no fuse on this, and I know that's somewhat dangerous. Uh, I I cannot I haven't found a place to put one yet. I haven't decided on where I want to put a fuse, mainly because all of this one gauge cable here is current. It's it's current carrying, and it's supposed to carry cranking apps to a, a starter motor on a car or a truck or an airplane so if i put a fuse anywhere it'd have to be really really tough um i know a lot of modern vehicles have fuses on the battery posts themselves so maybe down the road i'd like to put one there um, and this is just to prevent something from shorting out uh, or in case like a screw or something dropped inside this switch and bridged contacts uh, right now if that happened that that wouldn't be very good uh, something would probably blow up or burn so um, like I said I'd like to put a fuse or a circuit breaker somewhere on this thing just to make it safer